Romans chapter 8. Therefore, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, in that it was weakened by sinful nature, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of a sinful man to be a sin offering. And so He condemned the sin in a sinful man, so that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the Spirit. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their mind set on what that nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then you are dead, then your body is dead to sin, but yet your spirit is alive to righteousness. And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead would also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brethren, we have an obligation, but it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship, by which we cry out, Abba, Father. And the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs of God. Uh, then we are heirs, heirs of God and joint and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not, compare, are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation longs in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, subjected it in hope that the whole creation, that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of light, of the children of uh, God. And we know... <clears throat> We know that the whole creation has been longing as uh, we know that the whole creation has been groaning <clears throat> as in the pains of a childbirth right up to the present time. And not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit groan inwardly as we eagerly wait our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is Seen is not hope, is no hope at all. But who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not even know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of Spirit, that the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. Uh, so that, uh, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be confirmed to the image of his, uh, for whom he foreknew, he also confirmed he also predestined to be confirmed to the image of his likeness so that he might be the first one among many brethren for whom he predestined he also called whom he called he also justified whom he justified he also glorified what 
Shall we say then in response to all this, if God be for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who can lay any charge against whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is it that condemns Christ Jesus who died for us? Moreover, he was raised to life, is seated at the right hand of God, and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long and we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors to him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, nor things present nor future, nor any powers, nor neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. To God be the glory.